All right, I think we back in. Ao, back at it again, doing me peace and love and reflections. My name is Jojo. All right, I think we back in now. All right. All right, y'all, we're going to start over. Ayo, back at it again, doing me peace and love reflections. We're here for another Soul for Tunes here on Stereo, where we start every Monday at 11, 11 a.m. Central Time, and hopefully Stereo keep us not from being kicked out so we ain't got to do this again. Welcome to another Motivational Mindful Manifesting Monday. We're here to start our sewing week off right, and peace be upon you, Sister Chocolate, for being in the room again and making sure that we're here at Soul for Tunes. Yes, indeed. Peace and wellness to all. I'm glad to be here for another Soulful Tunes. You know, this is how I get into the soul and spirit for the week. And to, this week is going to be another busy week for me. And so I'm glad to be here to have this conversation and to chime in on whatever the topic is going to lead to. Today's topic is the stagnant energy of missing. And I put a dash there for the blank space of understanding that lack can be anything. And this has been an interesting conversation because I'm about to, actually going to post a post about it this morning. And it really goes to far as what are you really missing? When you use the words, I am, I miss, or I will miss, or I have missed, you tell yourself you lacking. And when you address that you lacking, it's like, you allowing yourself to feel like you not your best. For me personally, I don't miss nothing. I think I offended like three or four people by me posting that I don't miss nobody and nothing and no one. I just enjoy what I had at the time. You know, I enjoy the moments that I got to spend because not everybody gets to spend moments like that. Not everybody gets to have people around them like that. I miss all forms, the negative and the good. Why? Because it missed me. I don't think about it. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think about any of that mess. Everybody be telling me, Jojo, I miss you. And then, and I'm looking at them and they're like, do you miss me? And I'm like, that's not the answer you want. Cause the answer is no, no, I don't. I don't think about the past. I think about the present. No, I don't miss anybody because I enjoy what you got, what you had. Cause whatever you gave me was an investment and it made my life an asset. Assets aren't lost. They don't lack in anything. An asset is created because it gives you more over time than you started with initially with the first investment. So the, the topic is the stagnant energy of missing. When you put the words, I miss or I have missed, you've started your energy in a stagnation way. You stop and you thinking back to the past. It's like time jumping. Imagine if you're sitting there saying, Man, I remember when, what are you doing? You stopping your growth energy and you looking back at what could have been, what should have been, what would have been, and life around you was moving forward still, but you have stopped and turned around to look. I've noticed this, this was being something I woke up to yesterday. Um, the spirit of people worry about things due to their lack like you can't say man oh let's use cheating you got you in a relationship with somebody and they always saying i think she cheating on me i think he cheating on me and you living in that it's mostly because you feel like at some point of your life and your your energy you lacking something that will cause them to see somebody else's growth like i wouldn't run around seeing somebody else's growth that's better than mine. I will only see growth that is in me. You know, a person that run around saying, he more handsome or she's looking fine or she got more money or she got more money or or she got more muscles and I got more muscles, they got more muscles. You know what I'm saying? You looking at these people saying, I lack, I lack, I lack. Jealousy is formed with the ideal of lack. What I mean by that is I can't be jealous of you if I don't see myself lacking. If you got it, I most likely can get it. And if I can get it, why well, I care about you having it? There ain't no lack in that. But when you say, man, her hair is long, her clothes is fly, his, his muscles is big, his girl is fine. Where your girl? 
where your muscles? Can you not get muscles? Can you not go get a girl? Can you not go get a car? Can you not go get some clothes? You can. You can do all these things because in, in life you strengthen yourself every day with all your thoughts and understanding. So therefore what? You have no lack. But when you look at people and you see lack in self, because jealousy is not I see the lack in you, is I see the lack in self. You start to say things like, man, I remember when I looked like that. I remember when I had that. I remember when, and therefore you start to do what? The stagnational energy of missing whatever that is, right? So in understanding that, when I say jealousy is the, the you can say jealousy is the seed of lack. You can say at the root of jealousy, you see lack. You can say because the roots and the seed is pretty much the same thing, but depends on what level you're looking at. For me, I don't see lack like that. Lack don't linger in my life because I ain't lacking. Um, I'm doing what I'm doing because I do it and I want to do it. That's why I say back at it again, doing me. Because you ain't going to tell me what I'm doing. You ain't me. Don't ever open mouth tell me what I'm doing. You have no idea what I'm doing. And that's like when we talk to the Most High, the Most High is doing whatever he's doing. You can't be like, Most High, can you bless me today with $10,000? He's like, you don't even know what I'm doing right now. How you going to tell me what I'm already doing? How you going to tell me? You don't even know what I'm doing. So we got to be more aware of the level and what we are lacking. I mean, what we say we are lacking. I oh, don't know. And it's just, you know, this is this the energy. I'm trying to break the stagnation of energy of people creating lack in their life like that woman will still love you but if you continue to push and push your lack up on her all she gonna see is your lack and what i mean by that is very simple example your girl not cheating on you your man not cheating on you but you always saying you looking at so-and-so let me see your facebook let me see your messages unblock your phone who you talking to who you going to see when you say things like that what the other person here is, who am I supposed to be looking at? Who am I supposed to be talking to? Who am I supposed to be sharing stuff with? And they start to look for that. Now you've shown them your lack. Now you've shown them that you there is something that that person isn't getting or having around them. And now they're looking for it. You see what I'm saying? And then you start to misunderstand. You start to misinterpret you starting to feel like you missing something. You starting to feel like you lacking something all because you worried about what somebody else is doing. This is what makes relationships a problem and very unnatural. Because if you think you lacking in something, why are you with somebody? You supposed to be already whole to share what you have. If you feel like you in lack, you, then that means you got a person that you trying to fill a void with, fill a hole with, fill a gap with. That's not what a relationship is. It's a working partnership. So therefore, if it's not working together and you build it on one person to build it on the other person more, that is unbalancement. It's unequally yoked, as y'all call it. Therefore, it's a problem. I don't like to be in any situation that's like that, yo. Like, if I feel like there's some lack, I'm gonna address the lack immediately. And if the lag is still lacking, I got to go. I'm I'm not one of them people you're going to keep getting on my nerve with the same situation and think I'm going to stick around for four years, five years, three months, three days with that mess. You got three times to do anything to me and I'm gone. I'll even address that. I'm like, well, this is the second time you done said this. Now the third time you say this mess, I, I got to go. And I'll, I'll say it just like that. Because I'll, three times you will not continuously do something. Did you know that when you repeat something three times, it's permanently in your mind? Do you know that when they do in magic spells and, and different incantations like that, they normally clap three times, say something three times, because after three times it's permanently in there? If you want to teach somebody something, teach it to them three different ways, three times each, and they will permanently know it in anything that they see. If you say, this is a cat, this is a cat. This is a cat. 
and then you look at a cat and you say, that is a cat, that is a cat, that is a cat. And then you turn around and say, that is a gato, esto es a gato, esto es a gato. These things gonna permanently say, okay, when I hear the word cat, that's a cat. When I hear the word um, a cat far off, that's a cat far off. When I hear it in another language, it is still the same as the two languages because nothing changed. It's permanently in your mind. That's how you learn stuff. It's in the power of three. Power of three is the root. If you look at the symbol for the power of three, you notice that it looks like three leaves. If you're looking at it in a two-dimensional way, it's just, it looks like three infinite points. But if you look at it looking down upon it in a different perspective, it starts to look like a leaf. I mean, look like three leaves coming out of a seed because now you're looking down upon it. It's not 2D. And you start to say, you know what? Now I see where the life starts. If you look at the seed, the seed start like that. When the stem come out of the seed, it then make one leaf, two leaf, three leaves. And from that middle part starts a what? A flower, starts a bud, starts, that's where the fruit come from, right? Before the three leaves though, it's nothing. So when we think of the power of three, we look at growth. Two leaves ain't enough growth. It don't got the energy and the space for growth. It ain't got balance. That's why you got the mother, the father, the child. It has balance. You can have more children after that, but it starts with the one, two, and the three. What you got? You have any thoughts upon this, Sister Chocolate? Yeah. Um, and speaking of, you know, the three and learning something or teaching something three different times, I believe in that because we know that the, the way to get stuff installed into your memory is through repetition. And so anything that you continue to repeat or continue to say is going to get locked in. When speaking on the understanding of uh, the stagnant energy of missing I don't really have nothing too much to say as far as relationships because I don't miss people. If I feel like I haven't talked to someone in a while and I want to talk to them, I just contact them, you know, catch up with them. I don't really tell people that I miss them. You know, if I use the word miss, it might be and I missed a message that somebody sent me or I missed a live event or something like that but it ain't even in a stagnant energy i just missed it i didn't see it i i move on it ain't nothing in uh you know being in a stagnant energy of thinking about it or constantly harping on it you know it's just that i ain't see it so I, you know I, I move on i don't really sit around and think about the past like that or the things that aren't around me anymore because there's so much stuff right here in the present in my face for me to focus on. So, yeah, we got to make sure that we don't get stuck in that missing things or looking back at the past and the things that we have, because when we do that, we don't see what's in front of us and we don't see opportunities that we could take advantage of for the future. I agree with that most definitely. I'm the same way. I won't be missing stuff, yo. Like, I'll miss how I used to be. When people talk about missing a lot, they always talking about dead people a lot of the times. I miss my mom, I miss my daddy, I miss my grandma. You only miss them because something you have in your life is lacking. You miss they cooking because you didn't sit down and, and find out what the recipe was. You miss your mama's instructional voice because you didn't learn the lesson she was trying to instill in you. But that's why you missed it. You miss you miss having hugs. That's because you didn't get the hugs when you had it present. And now you, you just addressing lack. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I thought about it when my daddy died. I was like, yo, everybody was like, ain't you sad? I was like, but my daddy instilled so much information in me. If I feel like I miss him, that means I got to dig deep and find the lessons he was trying to teach me because he taught me way too much. It's like, well, don't you miss him being around? If anything, he taught us he was going to die. He taught us all we're going to die. So no, he taught us how not to miss and how not to sit and lack. When you think about finances, people be missing money. They be misplacing their stuff. 
and they 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 developed this this band aid for financial missions, and the band aid is life insurance, wheels, and trust. And y'all say, Jojo, are you against these things? No, I'm just telling y'all. I'm not going to say I don't like a Band-Aid. That don't make no sense. What, I'm, what I am telling you is that the reason you have a Band-Aid is because your engine just tells us you weren't paying attention. So the reason y'all need these trusts and these wills and these life insurances because you yourself mismanaged your money. You misunderstood what money was and you missed the opportunities to increase for yourself. This is just what it is. And y'all use a lot of these things as Band-Aids bandages to help you with your life to help you heal and grow because even if somebody put you a thousand dollars in the trust after they pass on right that's a band-aid that's a thousand dollars what you gonna do with that thousand dollars almost everybody spend it immediately go buy some shoes go buy some clothes go go pay a bill or two and it's gone so the band-aid did what only last for a little bit life insurance same thing only lasts for a little bit it's only an asset if you say, you know what? Let me take this and go get more assets. Let me take this and get more help. Let me take this and get more. But until y'all do that, most of y'all don't. It's just a bandage. Let me heal some wounds of me being deceased. <laughs> y'all don't see it like that, though. Y'all be screaming, we all got to get life insurance. Why do you need they, they energy after they pass? because you feel like you lacked opportunities. It's gonna help you not miss them so much, right? Most likely it was a breadwinner and you lit, you you didn't pay attention. I ain't about to get none of y'all my money <laughs> after I pass on because you lacked. I done gave you all the energy of what I was doing before I left. Now I gotta give it to you. Only thing you can do without I say, if I say, um, put in the paperwork, this is where my, who gets to unlock my stuff, my beneficiaries, that's, that's who you get. That's not really a bandage. That's just to say, keep the lineage, keep the legacy going, keep the information growing. You see what I'm saying? That's a seed. A beneficiary is a seed. But them other things, them attachments, <laughs> them bandages, yo. The images of the mental wounds left behind for these people no longer being what my daddy called cash cows. He would always tell us when the cash cow is gone, y'all gonna want to listen. He would always tell us that he would refer to himself as the cash cow. He'd say, and it was always funny. My daddy had multiple jobs, but my mama was getting paid higher, right? He had multiple jobs. He had his own business. And, but yeah, my mama was getting paid higher because she had a higher education. But he would always refer to himself as the cash cow. How you and your money was like, how you gonna be the cash cow? You ain't making the most money. Cause his money wasn't seen in financial revenue. His money was the information and the skills and the wisdom that he possessed and he instilled into us. And therefore he exchanged that energy into us. And if we paid attention and we paid him in attention, we would be rich. I paid him a lot of attention. Why? Because I was like, I do not want to work. I see my mama getting an education, spending all her life in school. I see my sisters are always at the nine to five. And I was just like, this is not my life. And I would always ask them, daddy, how I get out of this? Every time I had financial questions, I went to my daddy. My mama to this day, so I don't know why you listen to him. Because listen, at the end of the day, I didn't want to work no nine to five. And he wasn't working no nine to five for the last couple years of his life. And that was only because he said he was bored and he needed something else to do. He spent 30 years doing the same thing. He was just doing something new. And and that was that was beneficial. He did good work. You know, he instilled his seeds of wisdom into multiple children. He was the head of the, the transportation department of the school district. You know what I'm saying? So that that was beautiful, right? But it was like, This is my favorite one that thing he told me financially. I say, Daddy, I got credit card debt. How do I get rid of this credit card debt? People, people always tell me you can get rid of credit card debt. He said, Baby, I'm gonna teach you how to get rid of credit card debt. I said, All right, I'm listening. I get my pen and paper out to listen and take notes because this wasn't a time I was ready to ingest the information, not just listen to it and cast it aside. I was ready for it. He said, What you do is 
You give them a phone number. I said, yeah. And you let them call. I said, yeah. He said, eventually, you learn all the numbers that they call you from. I said, yes, yeah. He said, and after that, you don't answer. I was like, okay. He said, and then they're going to call for years, and you don't answer. And I said, but, but daddy, <laughs> eventually, ain't I going to have to pay? He said, you can't pay what you don't answer to. He said, after about seven years, you ain't got to, you don't got to deal with it no more. They'll keep calling, but you just don't answer. And to this day, my mama say, Jojo, I see you got a bill. The credit card company, I said, it's been 11 years. I got to answer that. <laughs> she said, well, I don't know why you listen to him. Why you, why you follow that ridiculous direction? Because in my mind, he was right. If I ain't answer them, they can't come get me. What are you going to take money from what? I don't know you. Who's this person calling me? They still call me. Bank of America, you know who you are. That's funny. That's funny, but I did want to chime in on what you was talking about with band-aids and life insurance. And really, that's what it is. I think that now that we got this understanding of life insurance and what we can get from it in the long run and stuff, we're thinking that this is going to create an opportunity for wealth for us in the future. And even myself, you know, I went and I started learning something about life insurance and in the program, but y'all know how I am. I don't really like band-aids like that because the thing about it is a band-aid is cool for a short period of time, but then what? You know what I mean? And what we do is we find ourselves constantly in these same cycles of having to deal with things. And what do we keep doing? Putting a bandage, a bandage over it. We need to learn how whenever we need to use a band-aid, like in life insurance, for example, right? Life insurance should be something that you set up when your children are young in case something were to happen to you so that they can be taken care of after you leave. It can also be used to set that financial foundation for them, but it shouldn't be used as a, as an avenue for wealth, right? Because what we should be doing is creating that wealth in our sewing, in our business, and what we're doing every single day. If I have a life insurance for my children because they're under the age of 18, good, but if I don't die tomorrow, I got that day to work on my legacy and work on building that wealth. If I don't die next week, then I got this from this time till next week to work on these things. And that's another thing about life insurance that I don't really like about it because it gives us this false sense of security and making us stagnant in a way to say, well, I got this plan here, so I don't have to worry about actually building that legacy. Another thing that it does is it teaches it teaches not only our ourselves and our children that we don't have to be disciplined, right? With me, I feel like the discipline from day to day should be in building that, that financial stability for yourself and for your children, right? So if I have a life insurance policy over there and I'm like, it's over there, they're gonna be good, I ain't gotta worry about it, then that's not that's not teaching me how to manage or build wealth. Right. Because I'm paying this life insurance a monthly fee every month for something that's going to come in the future. So what is it about sending that money to that life insurance policy that you you have to do? Right. Because just the same, couldn't you just set that money aside in your own account or in your own investments? Right. So it's not really teaching us discipline or money management It's really teaching us to, again, put the solutions to somebody else's hand. Right. And I'm not for that. I believe that when we are talking about things that affect our lives and affect the lives of our, our offsprings, we should be on top of it. We should be disciplined with it. We should be all over it handling. It. Whenever you're talking about any type of life insurance or any type of insurance, period, it's always about let me put this money over here for something that may occur, something that will happen in the future. We need to start learning how to manage our money from day to day and stop putting our money in the hands of other people to handle our business. You know, that's the thing I don't like about life insurance. It kind of teaches us to be stagnant or to not learn the money management skills that we need. You know, and it kind of teaches, it, it doesn't help us discipline ourselves in 
understanding our day to day, right? And that's the thing that's important, the day to day activities, right? Look at car insurance, right? You get car insurance in case you get into an accident. But think about how much money you put into that car insurance policy every single month. And that money you could actually be putting somewhere else, learning to invest or make different investments. This is the money that you could be building. So if you do have an accident in the future, then you could take care of it. Insurance is saying that I am not financially responsible to handle my own business. So we look at it as this great thing, but at the end of the day, it's saying that you lack the responsibility and the accountability to take care of your own. Exactly. And I agree 100%. I don't believe in bills. I don't believe in unnecessary bills. Electricity and water and gas is an exchange. It's not a bill. And they got y'all confused about that. Because you use the electricity, pay for what you use. They tell y'all that's a bill. It's not. You exchanged energy for time and energy. Water. You use the water, therefore you pay for it. A bill is, I, I want to make life insurance policy. I want to pay insurance for things that I'm not even using. A lot of y'all have health care insurance. Most of y'all not even sick. Y'all be paying monthly and yearly high dollars, too, for that mess. You ain't sick. And then on top of that, the government forced you to have it. You must have health insurance. And it's like, but I ain't been to the doctor in over 30 years. Somebody need to rewrite in the clause that if you ain't been sick a certain amount of time, you should be able to get a reimbursement of your health insurance. Because I don't want to be paying $1,000 a year. And I ain't been to the doctor four or five years. I don't want to be paying life insurance if I already have five, six savings accounts. Each one of them I'm adding money to and putting them under a different name, giving different beneficiary for these people to be okay later. These are bills. All right. You got to understand when you make a bill in law, it say first you go to the city of what? To make a bill, to make it a law, you got to go through Congress, you got to go through the Senate, you got to go through all these middlemen to make it a law, right? Your bill is is something that goes through a bunch of middlemen to become concrete and true. So therefore, if your electricity bill is a company, it go from you to the company, that's not a bill. You see what I'm saying? It's just straightforward. They, they supply, you gave it. That was the demand that was supplied. You're done. But when you got stuff like life insurance, insurance in general, when you got to pay somebody consistently to imaginary needs, is what I'm going to say, I'm going to label that as. When you give an imaginary needs, that's a bill. Ties and offering is an imaginary need. You think that when you give the church tithe and offers, you give into the church, you give into the Lord's listen to you more, you give in so that you can receive. It it's imaginary. Sowing is a bill. And you're gonna say, Jojo, is that does that make it bad? I never said bills was bad. I never said that. What I did say is understand the difference of a bill and exchange. All right. I know for a fact that when I sow, I'm gonna reap. How much I'm sowing is what I'm that's what I'm gonna sow. What am I gonna get from it? I don't know. It's all imaginary. My hopes and dreams is imaginary. I'm hoping that the Lord see the rent, food, water, and gas need to be paid. I'm hoping that the Lord see cars need to be paid. I'm hoping that the Lord see houses need to be made. I'm hoping that the Lord see land need to be bought. I'm hoping that the Lord see cars need to be. I'm hoping that the Lord see the needs that I have. So I'm sowing in order to, in hopes and dreams, in imaginary, to receive these things. You see what I'm saying? That's a bill I pay. I pay it in the form of imaginary, though. See, I'm, I'm, I'm giving unto Caesar what is Caesar. I'm giving unto God what is God. And I'm also giving unto technology what is technology. But at the same time, I'm realizing what a bill in exchange is. The exchange between a sower is the gratitude and thanks between you and the most high that's the exchange 
because sewing, you, you got to constantly be in the, in the remembrance of gratitude and humbling yourself and addressing and giving thanks. That's, that's, that's the exchange, right? Because that only happens once you sow, you be giving gratitude. And then when you reap, you be getting gratitude. You see what I'm saying? That's in between. That's the exchange. But the bill, the bill is the amount of sewing that you do. What is the bill you pay? Count up all the costs. That was a song my dad used to listen to. I believe he was named, it was like J.P. Patterson. He was singing that song. He said, count up all the costs it takes to run with Jesus. And I was like, count up all the costs. He was like, yes, to hold on to his precious hands. And I was like, what's the cost? He said, not everybody costs the same. Sometimes you can be running with Jesus, it costs your life. Sometimes you can be running with Jesus, it costs your house. Sometimes you can be running with Jesus, it costs your body. Sometimes you can run with Jesus, it costs your money. A lot of y'all running with Jesus. Y'all looking for him. Some of y'all seeking Jesus to run with him. Some of y'all think y'all found Jesus to run with him, and it's costing you so much. When you sowing, you counting up all the costs to be at a level of naturalness that the most high sees as good. All right. What I mean by that is I'm not chasing no man, no idea. I'm going straight to the source and saying, I have the seed because you gave me the harvest. And now I'm giving the seed to somebody so that they can have the harvest. And that is all the Lord wants us to do. And that's okay. That's the bill. The exchange is okay. what it is that you, you, you give and thanks with. Peace be upon you, brother uh, Jay. I'm glad you could jump into the room. We take, we're talking about the stagnation of energy or missing. And then you just put in the blank. Fill the blank in how you want. Peace, Jay. Hey, I was just talking Thank about the call, stuff. So. Yeah, I appreciate y'all, man, for, for having me on. I appreciate y'all for, of course, sowing and growing as you always do each and every week. And I look forward to the increase, man. And people that understand that stagnant energy is, is definitely going to be a, a, a detractor of growth, a deterrent of growth. It's going to definitely slow you down. It's going to hinder your growth. Uh, you got to, energy, it needs to circulate. Uh, it's a it's a, a principle and a, a, a universal understanding. It has to circulate just like any other forms of currency. Energy is just currency, and it, and it has to circulate. And it's it's in our best interest that when this when this energy is circulated, that it does come back. It comes back, you know, it's in the spirit of increase. And this can only happen from I'm gonna say you being and living from a, a, a natural self. Uh, from your natural self and from your higher self and a lot of people struggle with that because they aren't natural and a lot of people struggle with that because they don't live from their higher self and they don't understand that that energy has to be moved it has to be circulated and it has to be used in a manner in which that you are planting seeds of increase and and once it stagnates that's actually when the growth stops uh, if you ever heard someone say, if you're not growing, you're dying, well, that's because you're stagnated. And then our dust is just allowed to build uh, build up on that mirror that you're being reflected upon or reflected in. And this is going to be what is going to be causing your limiting growth or your limitations and things that are holding you back. So you're actually going to be, by not, uh, by stagnating, by, by being complacent, by being in, a, in, in your comfort zone, by doing things that that don't uh, lead to growth, you're actually, you're making yourself smaller. You're killing yourself spiritually every day on the inside. The energy has to be moved and it has to be used in a manner in which you're able to live to your fullest potential. That's the, that, that is what spirit wants to do. The spirit is for expansion, the spirit is for growth, and the spirit wants to evolve and continue to, you know, transcend. Uh, and, and, and that is the purpose of not having stagnant energy, of, of moving that energy. Exactly. Yo, we, you know, you got to count up your cost. What does it cost? What, what the cost is 
And a lot of y'all all automatically when we talk about costs, y'all talk about financial finances and revenue and income. I'm talking about the cost is the sacrifice. As a sower, the cost is not something tangible. The cost is the sacrifices. I have just to be natural at the highest level I can afford to to be in, but due to all these bills, laws, and stipulations that they have placed on us, our persons, our beings, this is the, the amount I can afford to give through this flesh to be natural. I have sacrificed family, friends, things, life, living space, situations, relationships, money. I sacrifice ways of making income. I've sacrificed food intake and consumption. I've sacrificed time. I've sacrificed my body. I've sacrificed a lot of things, situations, and intangible items such as emotions, health, life, and strength. I've sacrificed a lot to be in the position that I'm in. And I'm going to tell y'all, I don't, I'm not complaining. And a lot of y'all be like, oh, she's complaining. No, no, God, no. I'll sacrifice it again. I don't even care. I did what I did because I wanted to. I sacrificed what I wanted to because I wanted to. Not even that I needed to. I wanted to. I didn't need to make a sacrifice. I wanted to make that mess. Why? Because my needs was not being met. My food was poisoned. My water was poisoned. My life was in a cage. I was unable to grow. That's what my needs was. Growth was the only need I had. And now I'm able to grow. But I, the cost was sacrifice. I had to be sacrificial in all the things that I had. And and a lot of y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to sacrifice. When you a sower, you see what you sacrifice. Example, my mama said, um, we, she worked for me. We all working together, blah, 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 and all this, that, and the other. And I laughed because I said, you don't understand the sacrifice it takes for me to be in this position. Because if I wasn't in this position, all of us would be in a different mindset. None of us would understand the spirit of sowing. None of us would understand the spirit of gratitude. None of us would understand that there was something outside of the mundane thing we was doing, waking up, sleeping, and eating. We wouldn't understood that. Like as a whole, my family, we really just played video games, stayed in the house, education, went to work, smoked some weed, did it again. You know, that was the whole family cycle. You know, and and that was good for us. But then when I left, they were like, wait, she left? Well, where did she go? It took them four years for them to finally ask me, who are you with? And when I say that, y'all, that that right there was mind boggling. I literally sat every time I moved different country, I wanted to know why they never asked. Is there a number I can reach where you at? Who's around you that I can contact? They never asked. It took them four years to ask that. And it was like, finally, and the only time they actually asked that question was when they finally understood what sewing was about. It was like, when I sew into you and when I help you, I'm starting to see the things that I'm over here having problems with. I'm seeing my problems as being solved. And until they were sewing into me, they had a bunch of problems. That's why I stopped talking to them on the phone. Every time I picked up the phone, it was a problem. Problem after one, problem after two, problem. After, I was like, yo, I can't keep calling y'all. Because y'all got problems. I don't have problems. I'm enjoying life. And I'm making it a problem for y'all because I'm just telling y'all about how I'm enjoying my life. And that's a problem to y'all because y'all not enjoying y'all's. So I had to detach from talking to them. Why? Because I was creating a problem. Problem of jealousy. Problem of contentment. Problems of how dare she leave me. Problem of missing. They feel like they was missing out. They was missing me. They was stagnating their own energy and living in lack and I wasn't in lack and I didn't see them like that and they was they wasn't feeling some type of way you know what I'm saying but when they could finally step away from it and say you know what they started saying things like we understand why you couldn't be here we understand why this is not your level of understanding we understand why you had to leave in search of something else because we starting to see you 
Now, when we do stuff, we hear you say something ridiculous. Like they say, they hear me say things like, why you eat that? That's nothing but chemicals. Um, why are you working at nine to five? Ain't you tired of waking up for somebody else? Like they said, we starting to hear it because now we're complaining about the very things you were saying. It's like, I'm tired of waking up dealing with these people. Then stop. And it was like, no, 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 I need it for my bills. I know, no, no, I need to pay my life insurance packages. My mama always talked about life insurance packages. She'd be like, I'm better off dead for you because when y'all die, I got a good life insurance package for you. But who said the government going to even allow that when you go? Like, I'm not, my mind frame ain't hanging on to the band-aids. I'm not thinking about the bandage to cover the wound. I'm not thinking of the wound. I'm thinking of the now. So she always bringing that up. And it's like, that's not where my mind is. But she's realizing where my mind is. It took her four years. But at least she get in there. It's never too late to sew. It's never too late to sew. I don't care if you a tree that's 300 years old. If that tree took 300 years to drop a seed, that is what it is. It's never too late to sew. Mm-hmm. Brother James, was you gonna say something? Yeah, no, I was gonna. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I appreciate you for saying that. What people gotta understand when you live from a like a natural standpoint, like when you you know when you're when you're natural, when you're a sower, like when you're natural, you're you're naturally gonna when you live from a natural standpoint, you're naturally gonna be a sower, and and you're gonna take the time to do those things and sacrifice in ways to 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 make sure that you're con consistently growing like that sacrifice that you spoke of i'm pretty sure sister Chaka can agree and attest to this and i know i can too that just living from a natural state you know i, I naturally sacrifice certain things like like you said whether, whether it's your body or whether it's you know uh you know relationships and things like i came off of a like mean like it was like 60 hours over 60 hours of fasting um over this weekend and it was a sacrifice that i made you know for, for increase because it's nothing but increase that can come from you know resetting yourself and you know uh connecting with source and and digging deep in that right like it's it's certain things that you gotta you gotta sacrifice it just comes from having a you know, we when, when you're when you're natural, you understand certain aspects. You know the you understand the, the need for not just delaying gratification, but just doing those hard things that everyone else isn't willing to do, because everyone's not willing to do what's hard uh, now in order to essentially take it easy later. And, and and not saying that you're gonna not still be active because we do the things that we do because we love to do it because it fills our spirit up and because it you know it builds us up uh from the inside right that's why we elect to remove certain people or certain circumstances or certain situations from our lives or certain relationships from our lives because it doesn't fill us up it doesn't it doesn't build that energy and that momentum and we recognize that and being in the, the spirit of understanding and, and knowing what is lim limiting or hindering our growth, what's holding us back, what's what's not allowing us to reach our fullest potential, because we this and, I, and I've known, I've understood this. This is this is only happens in a select group of people that have the, the ability to self-assess. Uh, reflect, uh, introspect, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of look inward and determine what things suit their needs, what things fit, what they're looking to do, what they're looking to build, who they're looking to become. And and this is what keeps us where we're not becoming stagnated because we're constantly growing, we're constantly sowing because we understand the nature of sowing. We understand the nature of of being in constant motion right it's just inertia an object in motion tends to stay in motion and of course it builds momentum the snowball effect and things like that when you it's no way you can build momentum by being stagnated it's no way you can build momentum by by sitting still and and by not having any levels of growth 
And it's just certain things that I, I, I think and attribute to being natural. Certain things just come from understanding and living from, I'm going to say, that that conscious, that higher self from consciousness and things like that. A lot of these concepts and things that, like, people, they t I ain't going to say that they take for granted, but they just don't understand. They're not, they're just ignorant to certain things and concepts of, man, if I maneuver like this, my life will reap this benefit. They don't understand so in the reaping. They don't understand how they're supposed to move or use that energy in a way in which it's going to benefit them uh, tremendously. Like, it's an investment. Like, even energy is an investment. Like, when you when you invest that energy, like, in order to make sure our energy isn't drained, which is why you end up probably removing yourself from certain situations, certain places, certain things, because if you're not getting a return on that energy, if it's just constantly draining you, your cup isn't f being filled. Now you're just pouring. It's no transfer there, right? We it, it has to be transferred. It can't stay stagnant. So you got stagnant energy on the other end of that phone, but your your energy is 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 flowing through it. But the energy on the other end of the receiver, it's receiving, but it's not reciprocating. And that's a lot of the problem that we have in the world today. A lot of people are great. They're actually, they've mastered the art of receiving, but have have failed to even attempt at the art of giving, not knowing, failing to realize giving is the beginning of receiving. So you would actually receive a lot more by, by moving that energy and it'll open you up to receive a lot more. I want to piggyback off of this because I, I don't want to miss this this opportunity to talk about another level of stagnation and of missing. And it's something Jay said that triggered me. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna start off by an example, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on into the to the information. Example is this. Say you've been homeless, say you've been without, say you've been in sacrificial mode for a good long time of your life. I don't care if you was a child, a grown person, a young adult, it doesn't matter. You've been in a time of sacrificial, I mean sacrifice in your in your in your life. And all of a sudden you meet somebody whose cup runneth over. And or they cup don't run over, it just runs at a level enough to where they're already good. And this person you around them or these people you around them and they continue to say things like go on and take some have some here it's okay get you some they use these type of words and phrases and in your mind you say no i don't want to take from you no i don't want i already have some at the house um no 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 it's okay it's okay i don't need it when you say things like that it positions you in the state of stagnant energy because you start to remember and you start to look back at what you used to miss and i know we talked about in the very beginning catch the replay we hear every monday 11 11 a.m central time for soul for tunes here on stereo and if you we talked about if you go back to the replay if we talked about how you could say, I miss so-and-so, and that stopping to miss them, time going on and you missing time. You say, hey, I missed that opportunity. You stopping and you looking down and you're not going nowhere, you're not thinking of what's the next level. So these are two different ways of missing opportunities that create stag stagnation. The th third one, and we even talked about the rules of three. Again, go through the replay, hear this stuff again. Um, the third one is you sensing and you remembering what you lack and it's making you act upon others as if they are in lack or they will have lack. Example, I'm gonna use myself. I have a, it's called a ramble time. They also call them mamones or, or leche tree. These are three different words they use for the same plant, right? I made a video about how I got a tree. Went to my student's house. She doesn't have a tree, but she has the ability to go and get plenty of them from her grandma's farm. 
So they went and got some from the farm and she has a big bag of them. I know I already have a tree. But my tree, we we plucked it quite a bit. I ain't gonna lie. It ain't got a lot of them on it, but it got some. And it takes a lot of energy to get the ones that we have left because they're so high up. Now, understand what I'm telling y'all. I'm talking about how I have to exchange a lot of energy to get some. I go to her house and she says, Jojo, get you some mimonas, um before you go. My first instinct was like, nah, I got I got some in the tree. Um, I don't want to taste. She already used her energy to increase her bag, right? And the spirit said, you stop right there. I rebuke you. I said, you rebuke me, Lord. He's like, yeah, because that's the spirit of stagnational energy. This girl just told you, I'm willingly giving my energy to you for you to enjoy and receive. Though your cup may be filled, let it run over so that you can give the energy to somebody else. Yeah, your cup may be halfway filled, 75% filled. She said, who care how long, how much your cup is filled in? Take some and continue to run over. And I said, Lord is right. So I took some, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't greedy. I took what I could handle, what I could hold. And and I went out my way. A greedy person would be like, let me go get another bag. Let me, let me come back to your house and get some of that, even though I got a whole tree. No, I took an understanding that I'm going to take what I need. Don't let myself waste and enjoy what I have. A lot of us create stagnant energy because we fear that somebody else is going to have to sacrifice how we sacrifice. But the thing is, sometimes people need to sacrifice what you had to sacrifice for them to understand where you're coming from. Sometimes they have to sacrifice where you had to sacrifice for them to understand how to get to the next level for themselves. Sometimes somebody had to sacrifice how you had to sacrifice because they are the ones that help somebody else overflow they cup. We can't stop people from sacrificing. Let them be a sacrifice. Let them sacrifice. Let them have sacrificial moments. Because just like it was beneficial for you to increase and grow, it is the same for others. Let's not stagnate our energy because we are trying to save people from sacrifice. You can't save nobody from their sacrifice because it's part of their path. And I just, when I was listening to Jay talk, it came into my spirit to tell y'all that because so many of us bother people because we don't want them to sacrifice. Example, I'm in my house all the time and there's a lady who always is trying to quote unquote, save me, help me, assist me. I'm not asking for her assistance. I'm not asking for her help. She just always comes to help me and assist me. I see it as bothering me. I see it as being in my way. I don't see it as assistance. I don't see it as help. I see it as getting on my nerves because if I don't ask for it, I don't need it. Her, her is like, uh, I got the tools I have. I don't want her to have to sacrifice what I had to sacrifice. I don't want her to learn the lessons I had to learn. Allow me to learn my lessons because that is how I stimulate my growth. If somebody is constantly saving you, they create a lazy person. They create a weak person. They create a person who can't handle change, who can't have the strength to hold on, can't have the strength to pick up, can't have the strength to reach out, can't have the streets to help out. They don't have it because somebody was constantly giving their strength to them. When you constantly are giving somebody energy, you stopping them and stagnating their energy and creating loss and lack for them. I'm screaming in so many ways to this lady, leave me alone and allow me to grow because you are weakening me by doing these things all the time. I don't need your help because I am trying to grow strong. But for her, she just wants to be of assistance. I'm seeing a pattern though with her because her children are very weak. Their immune system's weak. Their growth is weak. They're weak in their minds. They weaken, like, I, I, I know I'm not trying to be negative and I don't want y'all to take this. I'm just saying what I see. 
how I see it. It's very obvious. Their skin is pale. They always sit. Um, they can't think from one thing to the other. They struggle with with a lot of different things. And it's like, I don't want to be there. And if you see me as your quote unquote daughter, stop, please. Because I already got a mama. And she already instilled in me strength. She already gave me what I needed to grow. I'm not seeking that. I'm seeking the way to use the tools I was given to grow. And I don't think she realizes that it's annoying to me. I'm always avoiding her now because I'm not trying to get her to help me. We can help each other so much and it can get on somebody's nerve. Y'all got to be aware when your help is annoying. Y'all got to be aware when nobody needs your help because it's stimulating, lacking them in the future. Y'all got to be more aware when what you, and then it go back to the whole topic. People start saying, man, I miss so-and-so cooking. I miss so-and-so. She was always there to lend a helping hand. Now they in the spirit of stagnational lack and energy. Stagnation means to die because you're not moving in any growth level. You just sit and still and everything around you is moving. We must be aware when we are creating moments of lack for others. Stop creating lack for others by analyzing and being aware of when it is you are truly needed. I can see a person climbing a ladder and the ladder wobbles and I can walk over and hold the ladder, you see? Or I can see the ladder being stable. You see what I'm saying? And the person doing what they doing and it's fine. Then I, I, I'm i good, don't bother them. Then you have them people who see the ladder stable to see the person is understanding what they doing, nothing happening around them that's going to say um, any kind of problems, right? They'll run over there and they'll create the problem. Oh, I'm just running over here to help you because I, I know what it feels like the ladder fall. And then as soon as you touch the ladder, they not thinking of your pressure, your energy, you intervene and they not thinking then the ladder fall because what you created a problem or they created a problem. You see what I'm saying? There's so many ways to look at this. And we got to be more aware. Awareness is the key. It's really the whole thing. Aware, Be aware of what it is that you have around you. You can't miss anything if you're aware of when the opportunities and lessons was in front of you, when the wisdom was imparted into you. You can't miss your family if they gave you the right and proper tools to grow. You can't miss being a seed if you a tree. Like, imagine that. Imagine this tree being like, man, I miss being a seed. I miss breaking through the soil. I, I miss having to squeeze my roots down the gravel. I, I miss having to have my, my body plucked by insects and my leaves chewed. Man, I miss that. You no tree out there saying that mess and bearing fruit. So why you do it? Ain't no, ain't no tree running over to another tree and saying, man, let me, let me shield you from the sun. Um, and this tree tall as shit. Like, ain't no, ain't no tree out there. You know what I'm saying? Let's not, let's not be these people and create stagnation in others. Allow people to make sacrifices. Allow people to harm themselves a little bit. If they need help, they will ask for help. And these people, you, you think, I need to help you because you never ask for help. Because maybe that's just the sacrifice they need to make. Practice ask them people do you need help before you reach out you can see a person stuck in a hole they may have a ladder they may have shoes on to climb out the hole you running around here screaming help help somebody help you got the whole police department trying to help this one person out of this hole and when you find that come to find out they have a ladder they have a way out you just stopped everybody's lives created such a drama and a problem, blocked the streets or whatever it is the situation is and created a situation all because you weren't aware, all because you didn't ask one simple question. Do you need help? Are you in need of help? Would you like me to help? Because if you don't, you can be seen as annoying, overbearing, annoying as shit. And I'm using the word annoying because that is how it really feels. It is super annoying when somebody won't let you grow. It's like being in a cage. You, you want to grow up, but somebody holding you down. 
and it's like yo let me grow no 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 it's it's hard out there let me grow and that's when people start retaliating that's when people start getting violence that's when people start getting sick they start to get at diseased they start to get addicted they start to get agitated they start to get these things because now you've created these things by forcing your energy all based on you not what wanting to allow someone to suffer wanting to allow somebody to find out lessons wanting to not allow them to make sacrifices or have sacrifices instilled upon them we have to be more aware that's what i really wanted to say to y'all today um i don't want to hold y'all too long people have already been here for an hour i'm gonna let the panel talk about that yeah i just wanted to chime in on what you just said because it's so interesting that you use that phrase uh hold me down or to hold someone down because that's exactly what people are saying and looking for somebody to hold them down but in them holding them down or or having a back or helping them out in times it's really enabling them to continue on a cycle of lack right especially when we're talking about finances because that's what people really think about when they're thinking about having someone to hold them down someone to pick up that lack when they don't have it right and what happens is they do hold them down because instead of that person learning how to be responsible with their finances like i said earlier with all of these things that we set in place to not take responsibility and accountability when they do that they give you a, a cushion to fall on they give you something to fall back on, to look to, instead of actually looking at what the problem is. And the problem is you mismanaging your finances. You shouldn't need anybody to hold you down financially because that should be something that you're working on. And you know, things do happen, but when those things happen, now you are aware of that. So now you make sure that you set yourself up so you don't have to deal with that in the future. And that breaks up a lot of relationships and friendships because you have people out there that are constantly holding down their family, constantly holding down the person they're in a relationship, constantly holding down their friends and being that enabler to let them continue on mismanaging things in their life that they need to really pay attention to and they need to take action in and do what they need to do. I don't believe in that, you know, just like people say all the time. It don't matter how many times you fall off as long as you get back up. Yeah, if you fall off, get back up, but it does matter. You shouldn't be 30, 40 years old still falling off. When we young or when we come aware of things, we're supposed to build that firm foundation to build on. You shouldn't keep falling off. Falling off says that you haven't built a sustainable and a strong foundation to build on. And that's what having somebody to hold you down right look at the words hold you down they're, they are holding you down because they're not uh, and they're not making room or giving that space for you to see that you need to change things about yourself so that you can grow and continue to build I see we lost Jay and you did say you was about to wrap it up. So just let me let the people know what I got going on. Tomorrow I'm doing a toolkit tutelage at two. It's going to be on Telegram. Just get in t- contact with me if you'd like to join that. I'll add you into the group. It's going to be an overview of all the tools that I'm going to be teaching over the month of August, whether it be spiritual tools, mental tools, emotional tools, professional tools. It's going to be an overview of what tools you can expect to learn about in August. And then I'll be here on stereo on Wednesday for words of wellness at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Back again on Thursday for our thinking cap thought at three. And then our financial freedom Friday conversation on Friday at 5 p.m. Until then, y'all keep sowing and growing and be well. Most definitely. I'm about to get up off here. I'm going to let Jay back in just to allow him to let the people know if he wants them to know.
Jay, let the people know how they can reach you and, and or any other things that you would like. I'm about to close this out. Okay, yeah. I appreciate you for putting me back on. But yeah, no, so basically what I wanted to add to that is just, just like the analogy JoJo made and then like a tree. Trees have growth mindsets. Trees always stretch their limbs and their branches as far as they can, as wide as they can, as high as they can, and grow to their fullest potential. They stretch their roots as deep as they can to build as solid of a foundation to ensure that they're not uprooted. And, and they take every step in every single way that they possibly can to ensure that they reach their fullest potential. That's what we as people have to do. And then just having that awareness, like Sister Chakra said, um, understanding whether you're being held down or whether you're in constantly in a state of growth and, and uh, ensuring that certain things don't hold you down. Uh, awareness and 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 growth mindset will take you very far in this in this in this world that we're occupying. Um, but you can definitely catch me on all platforms, Stock Market J. I have my uh, link in the bio, so just kind of click on my link tree. You can go to all my socials. Um, a stock market jail on all platforms. I'm also working on a financial education webinar today for the people that are able to catch it. Uh, to go to Facebook to get the link and everything like that. Uh, Seven o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. I'm doing a financial education webinar. It is free. I'm also going to be bringing back uh, uh, my dividend investing uh, class that I'm going to be hosting. And of course, you can catch me on my weekly coaching sessions. Uh, on the weekends, of course, I have replays available for all the students that couldn't make the class, but definitely tune in, tap in, and 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 and, and get in the mix of what what what's going on because this is financially increased um, in a natural sense in which you're able to put your money somewhere in order for it to come back with friends. You can put it on autopilot. You don't have to worry about um, what's going to happen over the next five years, ten years, because you know that the the the, the investment that you've made are protected or secured and and they're going to do what they're supposed to do which is return that energy in the form of money to you the investor awesome i'm glad we could all have today's talk it was a beautiful talk catch the replay if you can but we'll be here every monday at 11 11 a.m central time here on stereo for another soul for tunes i'm grateful to have had this talk with you guys sister chocolate sister um brother Stock Market J, we all up in here. We, I can't wait for the next conversation. Check out Financial Freedom Fridays here on Stereo at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, me and Sister Chocolate will be there talking about how we we grew this week. You know, what the financial growth looked like. Again, my name is Joe Johnson, known as the Master of Manifestations and gives her a fuss depending on where you are on the platform. Um, y'all so on and so forth. Peace.